Hello everybody and welcome to episode 10 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 61. I'm Icon and I'm a little bit surprised we're already in the double digit area. Well, be that as it may, we're going to talk about law today. Well, it's time to make these murders end and make our people a little bit happier. When we check out our building tab here about... Where were we? Infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure. Law. As you see here, there's a uh, big variety of different buildings that we can go for. And the guard post is the lowest ranking of these. The guard post is what we're going to build in this episode. And this is basically the foundation of your, of your prosecution machinery, so to say. Well, I have, I'm lacking for words. We could call it police. Let's call it our medieval police. We're also going to need a dungeon. This comes hand in hand with the civics number three technology. So guard post and dungeon are linked to each other because you know you need some place to put these convicts into. So we're going to upgrade our technology first. You'll find it here. The shield icon here is this civics. What I'm also going to introduce today, we're going to for we're we're going to modernize a a building for the first time today. Can't remember about it. I did this uh, I did it before in the series. So we're going to I want to amp up the output of these libraries a bit. So we're going to refurnish this room. Pick up the hammer icon. Use the scribes table function well let's see we have to find some place where it doesn't cut off the room yeah here this is good capacity plus two always keep in mind that you will have to increase the knickknacks and the likes as well to keep the efficiency up and then just press this and you're good to go that's just the basics about modernizing these rooms. What's really important to note here is that while the room is being modernized, it's not outputting or producing anything. So you gotta be careful around that. But I wanted some extra librarians because our science point output is not high enough yet. Okay, well, we're going to need a new item for the, for the new thing we're going to build up here. So we got the tech now, but we ain't got the armor. You need cut stone, you need armor, and you need wood. The guard post is, as you can see here, a prefabricated building. So there is nothing you need to configure there. You can just plot it down somewhere in between. We're going to put it down somewhere here. And we're going to need 24 pieces of armor for that. What I'm going to do in this regard I'm going to disable my import my imports for a moment, wait until I have allocated enough money, and just buy that stuff. Alternatively, you can also construct tailors and tell them to produce it for you. Tailors can produce armor out of leather, and that's a new thing for this version. So you could just uh, change the recipe here at your local tailor. I don't like the conversion rate though. It's a really bad conversion rate. And there's also a lot of other minor topics that I have in my mind for this episode. Clothing is one of them that has been put up in the comment section as well. I wanted to talk about it too. But first, let's check out how we can get our arm hands on our armor here. So we're going to buy that via a custom order and as you can see here six pieces of armor are 1700 so we're going to need quite some money for that so let's better fast forward a tad bit and make sure that our wood income is not going to let us down here so increasing the technology production is always a good thing and we're going to check out our research tab while we're waiting for the money. There's been a few things that I wanted to talk about here in between as well. So all these extra efficiency technologies are, as we've seen with the bartering one, are really, really powerful. And therefore, we're going to 
focus either into this a little bit more or go a little bit deeper into the refining technology soon. Right now, I'm not too eager to invest too much more because I also want to get my hands on the crypt technology. So we're going to research trees and statues. So this is going to be the... Um, the other side of the of today's topic while we're waiting for that i wanted to talk about things like let's see where they show up uh, gotta find them this building menu is a little bit convoluted and i gotta admit so i wanted to talk about these things here as well and i wanted to talk a lot bit a little bit about beauty and awe and the like so let's just pick it out here so here, a tree is spreading harmony in your settlement. So as you see here, this tree is spreading harmony. These things are incredibly valuable for the well-being of your people. And they don't really cost you much money or anything. You just gotta be careful that you don't put them anywhere where you want to build stuff at. But beyond that, these little things here, they might be not adding too much each on their own, but as you see here, we're only paying four wood for that. And each little of these things is making your city a tad bit more beautiful. And each little, little tad bit that you add up adds up to the total beauty of your city. And while that's a rather small value, you can see it here in the environment. So there's all, and there's harmony. But in, in this case, you see, my citizens don't care about this. And therefore, all I did here was for a nod. I didn't know about this, but now I do know. That's why it's important to check out these things. So what our citizens are after is all. So we can actually skip that technology and just say, well, we planted some trees for a well of what? You're asking that? Well, some other races are caring about harmony so when you check out the info tab you also see lots and lots of different things that your uh, that your people care about for example it, it's here all you always see that they care about that I don't know if there's uh, some thing about harmony if it has arrows down or if it's just not mentioned here but as a rule of thumb if you come across some environmental beautifiers, just check out in the environment tab whether or not your population does care about that. Here in this scenario, I didn't really waste much for that. I just uh, wasted a little bit of wood and we can just uh, erase these. I mean, it's a little bit of a pain now to get rid of them because as you see here, they are now literally everywhere. But it's it's not like they're hurting you too much. They just keep your janitors a little bit busy. If possible, just avoid doing what I did here. So for the sake of the tutorial, I take that as a very happy accident. Because as you see here, your dudes are already taking care of that. Because they don't want these beautiful, valuable things to degrade. But we've also unlocked a statue. And this one... Well, let's see the statue pillar. Let's check this one out. Oops. So, the statue spreads awe in your settlement. The statues need cut stone, and these are what you're supposed to do in with this species. Just check it out for the species that you're playing. As has been mentioned, humans are not necessarily the species that I would recommend for a beginner that much. Somebody pointed out that this might have been even a bad decision for a tutorial series. I partially actually agree, but I've, well, I don't mind now that it is as it is. So as you see here, we now have these statues there. And there's one really important thing. These things did cost us cut stone. And like I have mentioned several times before, everything made out of cut stone needs cut stone for the sake of keeping things intact. So your janitors now need cut stone too. 
but since we produce that stuff, it ain't no problem. And as you can see here now, awe is spreading through the city. And that's just by building those statues. And if you're building the wrong stuff, like you've seen there, nothing happens. And you can also hold down the left control and click those things, and uh, this way you can pick them up. So, oh, here I forgot one tree. Let's delete that, dude. So... And replace him with some statue. Alright, this way you can beautify bit by bit your city and make your citizens a tad bit happier. Meanwhile, we were allocating a nice amount of money and I think we're getting closer and closer to the point where we're able to buy that armor for our people. So now I'll just uh, flat out wait for it. Just uh, go for very high speeds. And as you see here, our migrational pull is still positive. These things like uh, setting up statues and the like are really powerful, especially the first few that you build. So we've got now the necessary money. It's been 24. Yes. So here's the same thing though. These things need armor. So they also need armor to be um, to be held in, in shape. So we're going to construct ourselves now a little bit of a tailor's row here. Usually I'm more advocating the larger structures, but I'm lazy today, and sometimes it's okay to be lazy. Also, I love it if cities just develop their character over time. Stuff like that, for example. Let's pick up more wood, and a portion of these guys will now be configured to produce armor for us, so our guard post is going to be okay in the longer in the longer run. So now let's set up a dungeon. The dungeon is not prefabricated like the guard post would be. I think we're going to set up the dungeon just uh, across the street there, so our guardsmen won't have a long way to go. We're going to set this up made out of stone, of course, and with with walls. What kind of prison would this be without walls? And as you see here, we're needing metal yet again, so. You never get out of these issues at all. So, there we go. Let's let's see, we can't expand that. So we're going to put this up and enough for one guard, or let's make this two guards. The ideal one would be five cells that would keep the guards, that would keep exactly two guards busy, but let's make it four cells. That should be okay. Alright, a little bit funky looking, but whatever. Okay, so this place here will need quite a lot of metal for us, but that's going to be okay in the long run, because we're now safely able to import our metal yet again. So, let's uh, put our imports back online. And I'm also noticing a steady depletion of my coal at this point. So, let's check out our charcoaler. We're perfectly able to set up more people there, so no biggie so far. Let's make that five people charcoaling, so we definitely will have enough, enough intake here. At the same time, we have now 20 odd jobbers, so we're really well off. What we're not well off with is our metal, but that's just something that will pass. Well, we're constructing our guard post, but we're now going to be in a bit of a weird situation for a while. That's why I'm going to turn it off for now. We're going to disable the guard post until the dungeon is completed, because I really feel like this would be a weird thing if we'd had a guard post up and running without the dungeon. That's not too good. So, there we go. I think we've had a wrongful death. Yeah somebody died out of another reason so the guards people will ultimately shut down the this this constant death of people somewhere because of some somebody murdering them that's the basic uh, usage of that but that's just 
I'm scratching the tip of the iceberg there. There is more beyond that and we're going to explore that as soon as our little munchkins have imported some ore for us. But all in all, the economy right now is really buzzing. We got a nice income and our treasury is well filled so since I've upgraded the library we also have a nice bump up in knowledge let's use that to unlock the crypts the crypts oh the crypts I don't know if I need metal for those I vaguely think so no they only need stone and cut stone right now Crypts are insanely uh, attractive burial places. They are basically the, the most attractive burial place a person could ask for, and they really do have a high impact on your city. So we're going to put up one crypt here right next to the city's dungeon. I really find that somehow fitting. And there we go. And so inside here, you can put up several graves, and as you see here, the graves also keep employees busy for the first time, I think. I think that's the first time right now. So let's make this happen like that. Put in some pillars in the middle. Go. And the statues add in respect. This is basically, you know, your fluff attribute for, for crypts. And with the statues, as you see here, you can make them smaller or larger. And just like with all the other buildings, make sure that you get that stat on 100 person. And as you see here, this is a massive project in terms of cut stone usage. We have here 184 cut stone being used up. So this will be our next big uh, big drain of resource. But believe me when I say that this will be extremely much worth it. What's also extremely valuable about the crypt is that you're going to have a really, really huge impact on that. I think from all the service buildings that I've been playing around with, the crypt was the most powerful impact-wise. And here we get ourselves new odd jobbers into town. I want to be a little bit more reluctant with that for now, because I don't want to have an accidental plummet of happiness there. Here's one thing with those migrants. Never pick up too many at once of them. When you check out your population, the topmost rider here, population in your fulfillment area. There's a immigrant's uh, stat. Some races care more about migration than others. Humans dislike that. Basically, the more immigrants there have been in a short period of time, the unhappier your people will be about that. Therefore, if you add in too many migrants at, all, at once, you can even have it that your that your population's uh, happiness might keel over so hard that they'll stop supporting you. This is a extreme thing that usually doesn't happen, but it's worth noting that these high migration levels have their price. And if you ever run into something like after finishing the crypt, for example, you'll notice that you sometimes have the ability to pick up migrants in the double-digit area. This is where you have to really think about whether or not you want to pick up that many people at once. That's why I'm emphasizing that. You can always also don't pick up all the aspirants at once by configuring it here. Double-clicking this figure here is just one shortcut that I like to use. Okay, well. It's taken us sadly forever to take to get the metal together, but I think it's going to be better from now on. There has been a large shipment uh, already, and that's uh, something that I didn't know here. If you press this button here, you can see how much is inbound to your place and where the caravan is, or is, is right now at. 
thanks for that pointer. I had no clue. Now, let's stay on the super fast speed. And at this point, the city would be well able to set up more different um, specialized workshops. So we could easily amp up our different productions at several spots. We could amp up our cut stone production, for example, but I'm reluctant to do so out of the simple reason that I don't run a quarry yet. And all the resources that I pick up and that I sell right now are finite. So while wood regrows, stone doesn't. The only infinite source of stone are deposits there, and therefore I don't want to amp that up. And on the other hand, we're already amping up the tailors. The tailors nowadays will be working on fabric though. And I'm going to put up a handful of tailors that are going to produce armor for us. For the sake of the upkeep of our, of our guard post, so to say. Most for first and foremostly, but as you see here, we're uh, we're getting in bigger and bigger shipments of ore. That's also because our economy is really not that bad anymore. And let's see, that's something I wanted to try out. Can I do this? No, sadly I can't. Copy this layout on top of the other. So here's the next thing that I want to do while we're waiting. I want to get up a, another big scribe station here so we can get ourselves some more library output there because we need more knowledge we certainly need more knowledge alrighty so here's the crypt it's finished and as you see here it also needs employees to keep up the, the bill of course and you can now see the madness like we're only starting with that for some reason i don't know why people care about this so freaking much but crypts are like as you see here there's this extreme bump up in in terms of religion and you see here plus 34 people are available for us right now we're not going to pick up the that many dudes here because you know we want to be careful about that we can now finally get our smelters working on higher ratios because we got so much ore that they actually need to work through and that's a good thing that's really really a good thing so let's keep two of these um, may, uh, of these tailor shops on armor and three of them on text uh, on uh, clothing. So I wanted to lose a handful of words on clothing too. Somebody mentioned that I just should add up more clothing for the people to make them happier. That's a good point. You see this in the equipment tab. As you see here, we have a very, very low fulfillment in terms of equipment as of yet. Uh, thanks, slaver. And that's because we don't have that much here. So, as has been pointed out, this is a good thing to have more clothing. And here you can configure how much clothing your people should have. This is basically how many suits of clothing your people are allowed to have at once. And amping this up makes your people happier. But only in so far, if you already fulfill those two suits of clothing that everybody likes to have right now so once we have a surplus of clothing we're definitely going to amp this up because this is for sure making people happier but since we don't have the surplus yet it's sadly not happening but i just wanted to point that out the more clothing you give to your people the happier they are because of that of course, obviously so the dungeon has been finished so let's put up our guard post. The guard post, as you see here, has this blue mesh grid, and this is the reach of your guard post. Sadly, this doesn't increase with more people in, involved or not. So as we see here, a small part of the city is not covered by this. As the time passes, you'll need more guard posts than that, of course. And here's where our prisoners will be uh, put into. And we already got our first prisoner. So you can here 
put these prisoners to the gallows. Of course, you have to research the gallows first and build them up as well. Let's uh, get on over here to our population tab and get on over to the law tab. So here you see how lawful our city is. Our species does care about that. Law is an important stat for our species. And when we get on over to this tab, we can configure what's supposed to happen with our prisoners. Here we can tell that our prisoners are 25 of our 25 persons of our prisoners are supposed to be executed and zero percent of them are supposed to be enslaved you can just uh, choose that to your own liking the other thing you can also do is you can free your people as you see here every species has different uh, ratios of lawfulness and a different rate of crime and humans are actually pretty crimeful and not very lawful that has been pointed out in the comment section a while ago why i picked humans because they are not too lawful they have a higher ratio of crime and therefore therefore if you want to make it yourself easy in your own run pick up a high lawfulness and low crime rate race because this will make things really a lot easier here you can also ch check mark if you want to banish your um prisoners this will no longer need a dungeon, but on the other hand, your dudes will be lowering their lawfulness in general. Your banished subjects lower law, because, you know, you're not really dealing with those people. You're just kicking them out of the door. They will come back later to bite your butt. So, over here, you have your slavery tab. This is important if you want to enslave your um, your prisoners. And we're going to go for a ratio here where we say 75% are going to be executed and the rest is going to be enslaved. So slaves have needs just like the rest of your populace too. And you can, and you can free them as well. You can now either put the entirety of the people to uh, to the slaver or execute a couple of them executions increase law but they lower happiness you know it's just like the people see that there's something bad happening if they don't behave therefore they behave better but it's not exactly spreading happiness so one last word about crypts that's extremely extremely important the moment you have finished your first crypt, do the same thing I do here, just do another one. The moment this thing is full, the moment there is no longer a burial spot at the crypt, you lose the entire mood bonus from the crypt. This resulted in one of my gameplays in an immediate riot because the people were so effing unhappy about the fact that there was no spot at the local crypt for them anymore to die at, that they had to riot. Several people died, lots of my stockpiles too. Don't be as foolish as I was, provide lots of crypt space. More than your people need. They go insane if there is no spot for them at the local cemetery. Uh, at crypt, I mean. The cemetery ain't good enough for them anymore, once you have crypts. But don't, don't raise the graveyard. They'll go nuts if you do that. I did that once, and while the graveyard in itself is only a lower quality version of the crypt, you see here the burial quality is also mentioned here as 200%. It'll lower, the entire bar here will lower, and there's this desecration bar. Desecration is by deleting a place of burial, or allowing to let it become damaged. This is making people also very, very unhappy. Therefore, don't touch your burial spaces, even if you feel like you don't need them anymore. Just let them there. It just costs you one employee and a little bit of work on your janitors. And that's that. Not much more. Trust me when I say it's not worth the trouble. Okay, so I'd say that's been really enough for one episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now you know the value of the guard post and how to process your 
your prisoners. Keep in mind that selling these guys to the local slaver is a great way of bumping up your income, so therefore you might as well follow, uh, get these things earlier in, because basically you just need a tailor processing leather into armor and some cut stone for this thing, which you can buy quite early on, no problem. Alrighty, so drop me your comments down below, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you, and there's really a lot of content there. Next episode, we're going to dive into the mountain and finally get started with mining. Because with all the people that I have available now at the city, it's time to put up a sustainable source of these materials because it's about time. Okay, see you guys there, and have a good one. Bye-bye.